You're uh, listening to OTBAM, the Sports Breakfast Show from Off the Ball. Up next, we're going to be joined by boxing journalist and broadcaster Gareth A. Davis. To set the scene, here's the promoter Eddie Hearn at a press event in London. Here's how he's framing the decision to bring the big fight, the Joshua Ruiz, Ruiz rematch, to Saudi Arabia. We have to realise that there is another world out there outside of Cardiff and Madison Square Garden. And we have an obligation to grow the sport of boxing to new areas, to new regions. And for me, this event could change boxing forever. Because if Saudi Arabia are going to invest in these kind of fights, with the population that they have, with the potential to grow the sport of boxing, you could be seeing a big change in the dynamics of the sport. And that's something that really, truly excites me. So for us, when we realise Saudi Arabia was serious about the sport of boxing, we then looked into the logistical side. And quite frankly, that blew our mind as well. And look at the events, look at the organisations that have been there before us. Many of these we spoke to in preparation for this announcement and this event. Formula One with the Formula E, of course, the European Golf Tour, the Italian Super Cup, the World Boxing Super Series, the WWE. Everybody has enjoyed that experience from an event perspective, from a fan perspective, but from a logistical experience as well. Gareth A. Davis, good morning to you. How are you doing? I'm very well, gents. How are you? Yeah, good. Um, Eddie Hearn uh, sounding a lot like uh, some of the great promoters from the 50s, 60s and 70s who brought fights all around the world because there was money on the table from those countries to try and bring a bit of glamour and glitz. Exactly. I mean, you know, I don't want to compare him to Don King... Uh, and, and the British businessman John Daly when they took the rumble in the jungle to Zaire in uh, 1974 with Muhammad Ali and George Foreman. But, you know, I mean, there was a, there are kind of parallels, if you like, with uh, Mobuto Sese Seiko, the, uh, the tyrant, if you like, um, uh, and, uh, you know, the tyrant and leader of uh, Zaire at the time. I mean, and, and because in, in many ways, in the last four days since the fight first broke and I did break it last Friday that the story was that the fight was on the Ruiz Joshua rematch was on um, you know there has been uh, a lot of condemnation and, and, and Amnesty International obviously bringing up things like the gruesome murder of, um, of Jamal Khashoggi the director oh just having some trouble with uh, Gareth's line there we'll get him back in, uh, in just a second and I think and, and I think, um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you now, actually. You've come back there, yeah. Um, sorry, I was just saying about, since the fight was first announced, Amnesty International, you know, have, have brought up the, the murder of, you know, of Jamal Khashoggi, the journalist, um, the, 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 the treatment of women in Saudi Arabia, um, the war with Yemen, a lot of civil rights issues. And, you know, um, Eddie Hearn is, is playing a very kind of straight back to it and saying, look, we knew there'd be controversies. We knew that some people would be unhappy about us going there. But the bottom line is, Anthony Joshua wants to expand into the world. We agreed with Andy Ruiz and took him to a neutral venue. But also the bottom line with this, I think there's just so much money on the table from, from the Saudi sports organizations that, uh, they, that they decided to take it. Uh, who, who is that money on offer to? Is it mostly in the purse that the fighters receive, or how does that work? What, what is the business behind that? Well, there's a huge site fee, I believe, to be in the region of 40 to 50 million pounds, um, that the majority of which will go to Anthony Joshua. Um, Andrew Ruiz Jr. is getting a purse of 7.5 million pounds, $9 million, to defend the three belts, the, uh, the IBF, WBA and WBO titles that he, that he won on that seismically shocking night at Madison Square Garden on June the 1st when he put Anthony Joshua down four times. So I fully expect that once the Sky Sports, uh, sorry, Sky Box Office coffers are in uh, as a pay-per-view event in prime time in the UK, so it'll be around midnight uh, in, in Saudi, uh, and the money uh, is negotiated with the Zone, the digital streaming service, the over-the-top streaming service with America, I fully expect Anthony Joshua to earn double what he's ever earned before, probably over £50 million, I would say, for this fight. Extraordinary, really, for, for a challenger to the belts, but that's his draw. That, and that is why um, 
you know, so much attention has been focused on Anthony Joshua. There have been three fights in Saudi Arabia in the last year with the World Boxing Super Series with George Groves and Callum Smith, obviously won by Callum Smith, and Amir Khan against Billy Dibb last month. Um, but the focus is on Joshua because he is such a, a big, pivotal, commercial and sporting figure. How much does Eddie Hearn make from a fight like this, Gareth? Well, do we ever get an idea? Uh, well, I'm not sure, actually. We, we only ask about all the boxers, but I'm sure, I'm sure the cut is significant. I mean, you know, remember Eddie Hearn signed an eight-year an eight deal with, um, with DAZN that, that is, is uh, reputed to be worth a billion U.S. dollars. He's got 120 million U.S. dollars a year to put cards together for DAZN. I, I, he, he'll be getting a pretty penny for this, for this contest. I don't know the exact amount. I can try and find out... Today, I'm on the way to a press conference. I doubt whether he'll tell me. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. We'll talk to you about that press conference in a minute. I want to play you this. Before we move on, it's um, uh, promoter and former TV executive Lou DiBella, who was in studio with us last week on Off the Brawl. Here he is talking about how he sees the heavyweight picture. He's talking with Andy Lee, and uh, his new recruit, recruit Joe Ward is also in the studio. Have a listen. Like, what, What's your view on the heavyweight mix at the moment? You had Deontay Wilder. I don't think you're affiliated with him anymore. No. So you're, but, I mean, you're, even, you're a neutral arbitrator in this whole thing? I, I am actually at this point, I have neutrality. Um, I think the two best heavyweights in the world right now, they're completely different. One's a pure boxer, one's a pure puncher. But the two best heavyweights in the world right now are Wilder and Fury. And I, don't think, I think that's unequivocal. I, I actually do not put Joshua, even if he wins a rematch, in that same category. I think he could be outboxed fairly easily by, by uh, Tyson if he doesn't get caught. And I don't think he has the punch resistance to go 12 rounds with Deontay Wilder, even if he wins 11 rounds. I don't think he's gonna, has that punch resistance. But I saw stuff that night that spoke to me of like self-confidence and, and questioning himself. I, there was stuff I saw in that, in that Joshua fight that made me think to myself, yeah, you have the rematch clause, and you probably, because of the politics of boxing, you probably need to exercise it. If you promoted him, would you have the rematch? You know, I, I, I was, no would have been my, my initial answer, but then you have to look at this, at the politics of the sport. It's bad if he walks away. It's not even looking bad. I wouldn't care about looking bad. If it was just looking bad, I would not do it immediately. It's you may not get that opportunity for, for years. Yeah, there's a bit in that, Gareth, what Ludabella is saying there. Just the, the first thing that kind of strikes me is that this isn't actually that much of a hot take, that Anthony Joshua isn't in the top two heavyweights in the world right now. I'm sure this has seeped into Anthony Joshua and his camp, and they know that this is being said about him. Is that going to be an issue now? Is what he's saying a self-confidence issue? Is it something that is actually going to grind away at him rather than inspire him to come back and prove people wrong? Well, you know, um, everything Lou's saying there is, is, is right. I agree with him. I think that um, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder are the two most dangerous heavyweights in the world. One is the biggest puncher, certainly we've seen for a very long time. Um, and the other is a fine boxer. And, you know, um, I mean, you know, Wilder first and Fury second on that. But, the, and, but I think Tyson Fury is arguably the best boxer in the world at heavyweight. But what I would say is this. Um, it's a high-risk, high-reward fight, this uh, rematch with Andrew Ruiz uh, immediately. Yes, I understand the conventional wisdom in boxing that you should build back um, and not go in against a guy who has outboxed you and put you down four times. It's not like it was a, a flash knockout. He was, he, he was outboxed by Ruiz very cleverly for three or four rounds. Um, but... I think that, that, as I say, the, 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 the risk is huge, but the reward is huge. Lou, Lou, Lou is, I think, telling you porkies, because if he had the same boxer in the same situation and he had one opportunity to win three belts back and earn £50 million, pounds, he'd be doing exactly the same for his boxer as well. I, I mean, you know, um, promoters are able to talk out of both sides of their mouths when they're on one side of the fence or the other. Um, yes, self-confidence could be an issue. I was with Anthony Joshua last Thursday doing some filming with him. Um, he looks leaner and lighter. He's got to be faster. Yes, there are risks involved. This is the moment. In a way, this is the biggest fight of his career because this is the moment where it either slides under the canopy and he, he becomes one of those guys that grew and grew and then he reached his limits. Or, or he, he, he finds himself resurgent. 
there is something special about him. We always knew he was a work in progress. And I think he got exposed by Ruiz. And I think he got exposed that week in New York by not really taking Andy Ruiz seriously. You know, he's a much smaller man, just over six foot, very tubby looking. Um, you know, it's like, it's like if, if Anthony Joshua was staring across the, the ring at Jair or me. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, but the guy is a brilliant boxer and, and he showed that on the night against Anthony Joshua. And Joshua didn't take him seriously, but he will the second time. I think it's fascinating. The whole scenario is going to be fascinating anyway, because you are going to have human rights groups complaining about him going there, you know, and that Saudi authorities are sports watching as the, as the term they use when they bring all those sports there. You are going to have the world watching to see if Anthony Joshua is this behemoth in the division. We know he's a commercial success, but can he be the same as a fighter? It's going to be fascinating. Yeah, I, I look, I, I, the sports watching thing, is a, a, I, they absolutely deserve to be, be charged with that because they're clearly facilitating the, the Saudi state. Uh, just on the point about about where he is at the moment, there's, there's also the possibility that he got into boxing to become rich. He's become rich. That's never going to disappear. He's going to be marketable for the rest of his life. Uh, sometimes something breaks in a boxer, and it, it felt a little bit like the post-fight interviews and the pre-fight interviews were of a piece with the performance that he put in against Ruiz and that perhaps he's just not that into boxing as much as he needs to be if he wants to be the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world and take on Wilder and Fury in a way that we thought was going to happen 18 months ago. I'm sure he does want to take them both on. I mean, you know, he's a really competitive man. You cannot get to where he's got to, as you say, as a guy that took up boxing seriously at the age of 17 and got to where he's got in the last 12 years without having serious athleticism, real power and real desire. I mean, he does put himself through the mill. I think, you know, he's not a natural boxer. He has to learn things. He's naturally competitive. I still think the Wilder and Fury fights will take place. I, 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 I do believe that he could win the rematch. I think it's a 50-50 fight. I think, uh, I think personally, to make it easier for him, they should have brought the fight to Cardiff if they could have. Um, I think that would have given him more advantages. He's been through the rhythm uh, and the rituals there twice already in front of you know, 80,000, 90,000 people. He's been successful. He's never lost in the UK. But I think the bottom line with this is I think they've realized that if they are going to lose to Andy Ruiz the second time, they want a massive payout. But I don't think they do believe they're going to lose. And when I spoke to Joshua last week, he doesn't believe he's going to lose. He believes he's going to be cleverer this time. And if he's got Andy Ruiz hurt, or even knocked down as he did in that third round in New York, he's not going to pounce on him and be reckless, which is what he was. He was very reckless in that contest. All right, Gareth, good stuff. Thanks so many for joining us this morning. Always a pleasure, gents. It's Gareth A. Davis there from The uh, Telegraph talking to us about what's happening with the heavyweight division at the moment.